Bear4812 coming at you once again. Uh, today we're going to be solving a hard problem. Uh, today's problem will be problem number 128 on the code, and that's the longest consecutive sequence. A uh, relatively popular one, well over 3,000, almost 4,000 likes. Very few dislikes, and as you can see, it's being asked by Bloomberg, Uber, Amazon, Google, the whole nine as of today, is September 17th, 2020. So, uh, and it's a really good problem. So for those of you not familiar with it, uh, it's pretty brief. It says that given an unsorted array of integers, we need to find the longest consecutive element sequence. And we're told that our algorithm should run in O of N, so linear time complexity. Well, if it has an input, we're given this array with 100, 4, 200, 1, 3, and 2. Uh, the output we'd give is 4 because the longest consecutive uh, element sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, notice that uh, we're not returning this array, we're simply returning the, the length of what that array would be. Um, so, if you haven't tried it yet, pause the video, give it a shot. Uh, we'll talk a little bit theoretically first and how to kind of get to the approach before we code it out. Surprisingly few lines of code though, so it's rated hard. I, I think maybe this one could pass as a medium. I'd say maybe it's a, a bit of an easier hard question, but still, still a good question, still not obvious. Uh, I definitely didn't get it on, on my first go. So let's let's dive into it and, and just kind of think about, you know, how we'd, how we'd go about this. Um, so if we, if we jump over here, I think the, the array we were given as an example was, let me get this, I think it was 100, 1, or something like 2, uh, 200, 3, 1, 4, I don't know, I, I might have mixed this up, doesn't really matter. So how do we go from here to actually identifying a consecutive sequence? Well, if we kind of think about this out loud for a second, if I look at a certain number and and I want to think to myself, you know, let's say I'm, I'm iterating through this thing, I look at the 100 first. I look at the 100 and then I ask myself, well, for 100 to be part of a consecutive sequence, I would need to have 101 in my array, right? Or I'd need to have 99 in this, in this array which makes us think that, you know, if we're going to need to be looking up certain numbers and, and we want to do that quickly, your head should go to, okay, we need to kind of use either a hash table or a set. In this case, um, I would argue we need to use a set and we should turn all these numbers in and put them into a set so we can, we can quickly identify what we're looking for for the following reason. If this array was, let's say it was a bit different, maybe I had a bunch of twos, so I'd two, two, two all the way at the end. Uh, this wouldn't actually change my final answer. So my, my, sequence would still be one, two, three, four, and, and ultimately our output again is just the length of that consecutive sequence. So we'd still be outputting four, uh, rendering these three irrelevant. Uh, that's the reason that I'd kind of argue we can we can think about, you know, let's let's think about putting these into a, into a set instead of a hash table because we are not concerned with the frequency of the occurrences in this problem particularly. So, you know, first thing we can do is we can say, well, let me take these numbers and I'll put them in a set. And in this case, I'll, I'll just kind of write them out super quickly again. Uh, so we have these numbers in a, in a set now and, and we want to ask ourselves, well, okay, now I can, I can iterate through these numbers and I can look at a hundred and I can, in, in constant time, ask myself, is 101 in there? Is 99 in there or, or kind of whichever side? And now, um, actually, I kind of said that and I, I want to dive a bit deeper into that idea because if we're looking for the longest consecutive uh, sequence, so um, if 100 is in this set and 99 is not, then potentially, if we start at 100 and move onwards, there may be 101, 102, and, and basically what I'm getting at is 100 would represent the uh, potential beginning of a sequence. If 99 was in there, 100 would not represent the potential beginning of a sequence because there exists, um, you know, numbers prior to 100 that are part of that sequence, which we would like to, to iterate through. And, and that's really where the trick in this one is. For any given number, 100, I want to check and really ask myself, is, is 99 in here? Right? Um, if not, so maybe if the answer is, you know, if yes, it is. So if yes, then we're going to do some stuff and I'll write that out in a second. Otherwise, if not, um, if not, we're going to do another set of, of kind of operations. So again, if I'm going to be asking myself for any given number, n, 
if n minus 1 is in the set, then, or rather, if n minus 1 is in the set, then what I'm going to need to do is i got to realize, okay, like, then 100 isn't really the number I want to start with. i got to get to this other number. Um, I hope that makes sense. And, and, and basically, you know, the, the way that we're going to code this out will be slightly, maybe slightly, uh, not counterintuitive, but a bit different than I, I just explained in, in the sense that um, where we're going to be taking action is we're going to be taking action only if 99 is not in here. And in the case of 100. So for instance, if I say, okay, is 99 in here? The answer is no. Well, if it's not in there, then I definitely want to say, okay, let me check for 101. Let me check for 102. Let me check for 103. When I hit a number that I do not, that I cannot find that's not in there, I'm going to say, okay, I'm, I'll be taking count as I'm going through these and I'll say, okay, I found a sequence that's, you know, yay digit, yay numbers long. I found maybe 100, 100, 102. Um, three numbers long and if that's kind of larger than my maximum so far then I'll, I'll replace the result variable so this really right here if it's not that's where we're taking action and and from there we're going to say if you know if the number prior to the current one is not in the set we have the potential to to grow and get a result here um i hope that makes sense uh, if not as always let me know in the comments down below i'm happy to clarify uh, i think from here we have just enough intuitive material to actually jump into the code and um, and see what the solution would look like. So, first thing we want to do as per usual is to do our, our standard error checking. And, and really the only edge case I can think of here is to say, if we're given some, some empty array, then we just want to return zero uh, because there exists no uh, kind of consecutive sequence, um, only a sequence of length zero, or no sequence, I guess. Now, the next thing that I want to do is, like I said, our first step is let's take the numbers that are in the array and, and put them in a set. So maybe I'll, I'll call that nums set, uh, which I know is super creative. We'll make a set and we'll say for, for num and nums, we'll simply take nums set and we're going to add to the number that we come across. Again, since this, well, since it is a set, it will only store unique values. So this will take up O of n, O of n space. That's all right. And I, I don't think there's a way to do this. In, there, there isn't a way to do this, sorry, with linear time and, and, and constant space. Maybe there would be a way with higher power um, time complexity, but, but you'd have to bump that. You know, they, they would take too long to run. So uh, th this will be our, our most optimal solution is what I'm getting at. Now, this is where, this is where the fun begins. So like I said, we are going to want to iterate through every number in this num set. So, what we'll say is for, for num in, in, in num set, we want to essentially ask ourselves um, if that number minus one is in the set, or rather, I'm sorry, even before I do this, let me let me set a result uh, variable. Maybe I'll set that result equal to, to zero, but pass here for a second. And ultimately I'm gonna to wanna to return this result after I, I do a whole bunch of counting here, which we're gonna get into the logic. Um, so again, I, I wanna ask myself if if the number that we have minus one is not in the set, let's try to continue to look forward and to, and to build a, a, a longer sequence. So uh, if num minus one is not in, in num set, then let's jump in and do some cool stuff. So um, if it's not, maybe maybe I should say this, maybe let me put like a, a count variable here and, and we'll say, you know, we've begun with this one number, so we have a count of, of one. Um, and we'll see that if if number minus one is not in num set, we want to search forward for for num plus one. So we'll say while while num plus one um, is in the set, so while uh, num plus one is in the, the num set, what we're going to want to do is we'll say okay, I found one number ahead of it, so I'll bump my count up by one. And the other thing that I'll do is actually increase the the number by one, so we can sequentially kind of keep looking. And we're going to keep going through this as we're as we're growing and growing. Um, eventually, we're going to break out when we when we hit a certain number uh, where where it's not in the set. So in, in kind of this example here, we've got uh, this array, and when we get to the one, we'll say, okay, you know, is, is zero in num set? The answer is no. Okay, well, we found the one, and is two in there? Yes, it is. Awesome, cool. Is three in there? Yes, it is. Wicked, is four in there? Yes, it is. Is five in there? No. Five is not in there, so we, we break out of this while loop, and we basically ask ourselves um, if count is greater than result. Then we'd say uh, result is equal to count, or uh, maybe even more simply, we could just say that result is equal to the maximum of, of the current result and the and the count. 
count will reset itself every time we, we iterate through a new number in the number set. Um, and I actually think that's it. I, I, I don't think I've forgotten anything. So we'll, let, let me try to run this and I, I oh, I missed the return. Uh, that'll definitely do it. Um, so it looks like we passed this test and, and that should be it. Um, I'm gonna hit submit here just to confirm and we pass, perfect. So once again, guys, as a recap, we're basically asking ourselves for every single number in the survey, which we've kind of turned into a set, um, how do we, how do we basically, or sorry, for every single number in that set, if there exists no number prior to that, that could be in kind of in a consecutive sequence, let's start from that point and, and count upwards and see how far we get, how many elements can we find. Um, any other code optimizations you guys find, let me know in the code down below, or in the comments, sorry. I, I guess I'm kind of realizing here, maybe I, I could have just done this and, and saved me a few lines if, you know, if we're, if we're really being uh, picky. Yeah, there we go. So maybe a couple small things to tweak just like that. But overall, this is a, a linear time, linear space solution to problem number one, two, eight, longest consecutive uh, sequence. Like I said, not an easy one, and, and this would definitely be a good one to practice. So uh, I hope I shed some light on how to do this. I hope it helped. If it did, leave a like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, show your grandmother, show everybody. Uh, it would It would help a lot. And yeah, as always, let me know what you want me to answer next down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.